Go. Hello, my name is uh, Ron Ross, and this is my seventh grade presentation on the early history of Maine. I've created a trifold for this presentation, as well as a timeline of events showcasing important dates throughout Maine's early history and development, as well as several photos and examples for things I'll be talking about in this presentation. Although my timeline begins with the arrival of the Europeans in 1524, uh, there are there were people in Maine before the first settlers came to Maine. I, I, I who was already. Um, the first people to arrive in Maine were the Wabanaki people, the people of Dunland, as they were called. They were a collective group made up of several different tribes, such as the Wabanaki, Abenaki, Maliseet, Passamaquoddy, and Penobscot tribes. They lived alongside Maine's coasts, lakes, and ponds in portable homes called wigwams. Wigwams were houses built with wooden poles with an opening in front surrounded by firs and a hole in the center where they would let out smoke from a campfire. They would move from place to place throughout the seasons with the animals and where, of course, their hunting would, their, uh, the animals they would hunt would move from place to place. Until eventually in 1524, the Europeans arrived exploring the eastern coast of the United States looking through, uh, looking for trade routes into Asia. In uh, 1604, using maps that were made by the original explorers from Europe, the French made a colony on St. Croix off the coast of Maine called Acadia. Later in 1607, the British would do the same. However, that fort wouldn't last more than a winter as they were they uh, ran short of their supplies. Every year afterwards, nearly more and more settlers was more and more settlers would come, building lumber mills and attempting to create more settlements. However, the natives had no experience with uh, with European diseases, and between 1616 and 1619, 75 percent of the main Native American population died off due to European diseases such as cholera, influenza, diphtheria, tuberculosis, and several others, such as the bubonic plague and I believe the common cold. <clears throat> this new land that the natives had left was used by the new settlers in order to build more lumber mills and towns such as Kittery. Uh, Biddeford and Scarborough to continue trade with the rest of the new colonists forming. In 1677, after Maine's economy had been growing progressively with its large supply of lumber, the Massachusetts Bay Colony purchased it with the modern equivalent of three million US dollars from the family of Sir Fernando Georges. Um, onwards from there, the Wabanaki, who had been pushed out by the diseases and new settlers formed a confederacy known as the Wabanaki Confederacy and performed several uh, attempts to take back land that had been taken from them such as the uh, such as whew, it's up in here. <laughs> during the 1740s through 60s primarily nearly every year upwards until the Revolutionary War where they were finally beaten back. After the states had gained their independence, the tensions between uh, the pro-slavery states and the free states was going, uh, continued to continue to climb as the states wanted a balance of power, fearing that the southern states would break away the Missouri Compromise was signed in 1820, making Maine a free state and Missouri a slave state, giving Maine its own say in its economy and sphere of influence. Later on, Maine's northern border, northern borders where many of the natives had escaped to, were still undecided, as the United States had claims up into southern New Brunswick and east and parts of western New Brunswick, and the British had claims down into central Maine. In parts of eastern Maine as well. 
uh, militias were called in to prepare for war, which was fear that would that the uh, that the battles would come to. However, no official war was declared, and the only two casualties were men which were killed by bears. <laughs> In, in uh, 1842, the mound was officially settled, creating Maine's modern borders as shown over here through its regions and counties. Onwards to the 1850s, Maine's economy was considered at its peak as the um, demand for Maine's lumber and fishing industry increased, as well as large shipbuilding ports which had the which had been created alongside its coast allowed for many schooners and clipper ships to transport goods to and from Maine, also increasing its economy and sphere of influence across the United States. In eighteen fifty one the prohibition movement first started in Maine with the Maine Law as it was called Banning the sale, consumption, and creation, uh, sale, consumption, and creation of alcohol. This was very unpopular with the people in Maine, as uh, shown by the Portland Rum Riot, where a crowd of upwards of 3,000 people had cornered the mayor in a liquor warehouse with his militia, threatening to behead him. Afterwards, the uh, mayor ordered a were ordered his militia to fire on the crowd, killing a man and injuring several others. The law was repealed five years later in 1856, for obvious reasons, the largest approval. Of course, to the 1860s, Maine had begun to industrialize and its traction with its economy had begun to slow down. It's, it also played a major role when the slave states finally seceded from the Union as part of the Civil War in the 1860s, we provide the largest number of soldiers in proportion to the population, as well as two of the major generals in the war, Joshua Chamberlain, who helped win the Battle of Bull Run, and Oliver Lewis Howard, who played, a key, who played a key role in the Battle of Gettysburg, which was one of the major battles of the war. Due to the industrialization, large masses of immigration occurred from Quebec, Canada into Maine for jobs such as in textile mills, and farming, and several others, several other uh, factory jobs as well. Upwards to the end of the 19th century, in the 1800s, Maine had provided the United States with the majority of its Navy and its sphere of influence had helped build up the United States with fighting, trading, and of course uh, resources for developing the country. We should not forget the sphere of influence that Maine has had because it gives an example for a good economy and way of life as it has been seen by many people. These examples shown are the British colony of Fort George alongside Poplar Beach, although it has started King, and Portland, which was a seaside town and is to this day one of the major parts of the state, as well as the several regions as the Native Americans were kicked off the coast and into northern and eastern Maine. Any questions? No, I think you did a good job. Good job. Okay. Thank you. That's where the are.